Welcome, welcome one and all to Hump Day. Yes, it's Wednesday, March 7th, 2018. And you've tapped into the one and only local news source for Lower Paxton Township, Central Dolphin School District, and the greater Lingleston area. Yes, it's the Gazette Morning Update. I'm your host, Bill Bostick, re- reporting from the studios of Lingolstown Gazette. And this fine show is brought to you by Consolidated Insurance Services over on Paxtonia, 6109 Jonestown Road. Home, auto, life, and business insurance is available over there. Look for the Erie Insurance sign on Jonestown Road behind Carnes. Got one question for you folks. Where's the snow? Where's Snowmageddon? Nowhere to be found. And let's just, since snow has been in the uh, the forecast over the last 24 hours, and I urged every everyone to go get uh, bread and milk yesterday, let's just see what's happening here. Uh, let me just take a couple clicks, and I also i got to start the countdown clock. Let's do that. Here we go. Looks like it's 33 degrees in U- the Ubana Gardens section of Lingolstown. And I did, I did actually see Ubana Gardens on a map here recently. Um, still, still interested in the, uh, in, in the history behind that. But 33 degrees, looks like we have a high of 39 degrees today. And a rain and snow mix here in Harrisburg. Um, tonight, 20% chance of precipitation, partly cloudy, low of 28. So somehow, some way, the nor'easter seems to have passed us by to the east. So if you're traveling east, uh, keep, an, keep an eye out for um, Snowmageddon 2018. And, of course, this weather check has been brought to you by the one and only, and I mean one and only, clothing shop in Colonial Park. That's where it's based. The Fat Man Clothing Company. It's not a joke, folks. It's a real company. I wear their clothing regularly. And um, it's running, it's operated by Anthony Cristillo, the most infamous, if not famous, uh, personality on Lingolstown Gazette videos in history. Of course, Lingolstown Gazette's been around since 2006. So if Anthony Cristillo is the top video pool, on, on this channel on the internet, that's saying something. All right, now big things to talk about here. As always, I mean every every you know when you're doing a newscast, everything has to be a big thing, right? Um, let me see, where am I at here? Let me where's I? Everything seems to go away and disappear. Uh, here we go. As always, as always, going to start out with the watchdog segment. I have a couple things to mention to you. Go back. Get out of here, Fido. Jeez. He is so loud. I'm going to have to look for a new dog to uh, be be our theme for the watchdog segment. Here we go. Uh, last night, I reported from the Lower Paxton Township uh, meeting room about a major event in our township. Of course, that's Lower Paxton Township. Apparently, the 17th, something like the 17th most populate, populated township in the in the uh, the state. I saw that on uh, Channel 21 on Comcast. I think it's either 7th or 17th. I'm not sure which one it is. I'll have to take a look at that again. But we're one of the bigger townships. And whenever one of the what what is one of the major uh, services, folks, that townships provide? And uh, you know, think of you know, think a couple. Maybe type it in the comment section. What's a major service that townships provide? Tim, Joe, going to type anything? Let me see if you get get on the keyboard and do something. What is one? Just name one. See if you're going to tap into what I'm thinking about. And I'm getting no response, so that's fine. Uh, well, I'm thinking about public safety, keeping our community safe, keeping our community uh, protected in the event of fire, or disaster, that kind of thing. And we've had a little bit of a shakeup in Lower Paxton Township recently. Our our uh, public safety director and police chief, for the last couple of years, David Spots, recently retired, but last night, police and fire. There you go. Very good, Joe. You get an A for today. Joe Gilloway checking in, our top-notch sports director. 
Yes, uh, public safety. Last night we have a new interim public safety director. Um, I'm able to say it now since it's actually on Penn Live. I have a relationship where they run things first. Uh, this is a f- person you probably have never heard of, but he headed up the local uh, barracks here for the state police recently. His name is he's retired P- Pennsylvania State Police Captain Adam Koshiba. Koshiba. He is from Maytown, Lancaster County, which is not too far away from Middletown. And uh, he retired from the state police yesterday. And today he's working for Lower Paxton Township. And the thing about it is, I mean, I want you to take a look at the article. I'm not going to give everything away, but I'm telling you, it was it, it, what happened when I walked into the meeting was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. And I'm going to have you read the article when I post it. It's on Penn Live right now. Um, you and see what's ha- you know, See why I'm saying what I'm saying. Let me let me see if they used my line. Yes, they did. They used my opening line, and it was an amazing display of something. You fill in the blank. Last night at the township meeting, when when Adam Koshiba was appointed Lower Paxton Township interim. Public safety director. The other big news coming out of the watchdog segment comes from always scanning, scanning the um, area, talking to people, trying to figure out what's going on. Of course, my best source of information is over at the coffee shop. I'm not able to get over there as much, referring to St. Thomas Roasters. But I did find something this morning. Uh, yesterday was the deadline for political candidates to file their nomination petitions okay and i've been talking about the 105th legislative district that's the one where we live in lower paxton township we've been represented represented for i don't know how many years many many years by representative ron marshago he's retiring here are your candidates again in the primary the primary election on may 15th if you're not into civics we're not electing anyone we're nominating a Republican and a Democrat to run for this office and then we elect them in the general election in November. That's how it works. Class is over. Here's your candidates. Uh, On the Democratic side, Eric J. Epstein. Uh, Eric is a Lower Paxton Township resident and has been in the news for many, many years as an activist, both statewide and in Lower Paxton Township. So Eric is the one and only Democrat. He's a shoe in He'll be on the fall candidate. Fall ballot, excuse me, not candidate. Fall ballot. On the Republican side, we do have a race. We have uh, Adam G. Klein, spelled K-L-E-I-N. I've been talking about Adam periodically, saying that he's running. He's a former West Hanover Township supervisor, an attorney, his, uh, I believe, I'm, I believe I'm correct in saying his mother, Sally Klein, was a former um, Dauphin County commissioner. So he, had, he comes from uh, a public service, local office type background. He is on the ballot. And a newcomer to, I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe Lower Paxton Township. Let me get a drink of coffee here. Uh. Mm. Okay, very good. Um Andrew Lewis, I believe he lives in Lower Paxton Township. He is on the ballot. Andrew is not a first-time candidate. I believe it was two years ago he ran for the Republican nomination for a Pennsylvania state senator against our current state senator, John DeSanto, of Lower Paxton Township. And Andrew did not win, but he's back. He's moved from Perry County to, I believe, Lower Paxton Township. He's on the ballot. So we have a Republican race. Should be interesting. And you would expect that in the in given the fact that this seat has not been open for probably a couple decades, something like that or more. So that's what's happening there. Um, also, just a quick note, over in the Susquehanna Township area and north from there, there's a 104th legislative district. Current office holder is Republican Sue Helm. Um, she's the only one that's that's a, a candidate, so she'll be on the fall ballot. And also Patricia Ann Smith 
I believe she goes by Patty Smith, is the only Democrat. So that race is set for the fall over in the 104th. I only mention that because, you know, the 104th district is contiguous to Lower Paxton. It may be worth mentioning. You know, Sue Helm is a member of our community. Just, you know, just when you cross over from Lower Paxton to Susquehanna, you go into a new legislative district. But, hey, I can mention that. I, I, no problem. So that, that wraps up our watchdog segment, folks, for today. Let's move on. Moving on. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Let's see. What can we do here? I love this bumper music. I'm falling in love with it. Let's see. Can we get it to play? Yes. <clears throat> What's this mean? This means sports. I just saw I just saw Joe Gilloway's ears perk up. Hopefully you're you're paying attention to what Joe says. Ooh, because Joe is not only a sports director, he is the area's authority on scholastic basketball. He's the number one authority. Now, he claims he's the, he's the number one authority on scholastic basketball by default. I, I tell him that he's, he's too hard on himself. He really is an expert, and he's a member of the Linglestown Gazette team. We, we love to have him, and we love working with him. So the reason I mention that is... Of course, the Lady Rams basketball team heading into state tournament play on Friday against Central Bucks East at, sorry to say, you must cross the river to East Pennsboro High School on Friday evening, 8 p.m. tip-off, and the Linglestown Gazette reporting crew will be there with a special analyst, Alexis Hartwick. Alexis, yeah, Alexis Hartwick, a CD alum who's now playing Division II college basketball at um, University of Pittsburgh Johnstown will be our special guest analyst. So we're welcoming Alexis back, I believe for the second or third time this year. So looking forward to that. And again, if you can manage to cross over the Wade Bridge, please come to the game. It's only six bucks, no parking fee, and great, great basketball action as the Lady Rams try to move on in the state tournament and as promised, if they win the state tournament, I will find a pole, pole to climb like they did down in Philadelphia when the Eagles uh, won the Super Bowl. That's to be determined. We'll see. If they win on Friday, I'm going to start getting nervous. And that takes care of your sports. And there's a couple different things I wanted to talk about today, but I think I'll just stick with the tiny is big theme. To wrap things up this morning, again, this is about... Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, whether you know it or not, is a big night in our township in terms of our future. Really, the future being at the next decade. Uh, tomorrow night, the Lower Paxton Township Public, yeah, Public Planning Commission, the Planning Commission is going to be holding a public hearing. Now, I know that must that, that wants to, you probably want to fall asleep, but but perk up here a second. What they're doing with the comprehensive plan is, is sort of rewriting a plan that sets the stage for what's going to happen in our township for the next decade. So whatever they put in that plan, you're stuck with it for the decade. Because when it goes into that plan and the supervisors approve it, they are obliged by law, by the, the Municipal Planning Code, the MPC says they must put that in the force. That's what they need to do because that's what the people are saying, right? Well, is, is it going to be the people saying it or is it just going to be a handful of, of volunteer public officials saying it? If you want to have a say in what's happening in our township for the next decade, consider coming out to the public meeting. It's at the Township Municipal Center tomorrow night, Thursday night, March 8th. There's an open house, an informal open house at 6.30 where you can, I think you'll be able to interact with the planning commission members. There's a consultant that's helping them. There'll be documents laid out. You can see what they're planning on doing. And all this information, by the way, is on the township website. And if I remember, I'll link up the township website. I'll even link up the draft comprehensive plan for you to look at today. And um, then at 7 o'clock, the formal public hearing starts. And what the public hearing is, um, they'll say, you know, this is the time and place established for us to unveil 
and get public comment for this draft plan. Well, if it, this public public hearing, if no one shows up, will be over in about two minutes because it requires it requires people to show up and say something. Now, I I will say something. Okay, so that means the meeting will be at least five minutes long because I have something to talk about, and it's the tiny is big issue. And without getting into grand details, I want you to come to the meeting and hear what I have to say. Really what this issue is about is that if we don't put out a welcome mat for our young people in our community, uh, they may not they they may flee because there's we don't provide the kind of environment, the kind of, of homes, uh, housing issues, um, different accommodations they want. And This is unofficial. I I am not a millennial, believe it or not. I'm almost 60 years old, right? So I'm I'm taking the word of other people on this. What millennials, these are people aged 21 to maybe 32, 35, something like that. They're looking for affordable housing and not the kind of affordable housing that we would think of. We're talking about really, really affordable housing that they can get at Midtown Harrisburg, Midtown York, Midtown Lancaster, those kinds of places. They want to have coffee shops and different and, and access to different things that are walkable. They don't have to jump in their cars. Some of them don't even want a car. So this just gives you a, some insights that we need to do something so that our young people do not flee our township. Because, you know, right now, you know, just in our state, in our whole state, including our township, we're aging out. The average age is going up, 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 up. And if we don't provide opportunities, we're not going to have any young people. And I, for one, like to interact with young people. I do it regularly at, of course, St. Thomas Roasters. That about does it. Again, tomorrow night, mark it on your calendar. I think the weather's going to be fine. Come on out to the Municipal Center tomorrow night at 6.30. If you can't make it at 6.30, get there by 7. And maybe take a few minutes. Take 15 minutes and take a look at this uh, comprehensive plan. If you don't get a chance, no problem. Come out anyways. So let's strike up. I don't know. I don't know why my bumper music always disappears, but I have to keep clicking this thing. Oh, click! That's a sign that this show is over. I've run out of stuff. I've run out of time. Thanks for joining me, Joe Gilloway, Tim McCarthy, and whoever else is out there watching. We'll see you tomorrow on the Gazette Morning Update, brought to you by the Consolidated Insurance Services. Have a great Wednesday. Bill Bostic signing off for now.